of uh, subscribers today. I'm so sorry for looking this way, but today it's raining really hard. So I decided to do some videos today because it's not too hot to film. Even though I'm still kind of hot, um, it's kind of better to do. So I don't know on which channel this video will go. It's called Geography Now Indonesia. Uh, because I already did Nepal on the other channel, maybe I will post um, on my second channel this video because uh, people from Indonesia are mostly there <laughs> on my second channel. I don't know why they found me through that channel, so I mean, that's fine. But I also have a lot of Indonesian videos on my other channel, so do check them out as well. Mm, this is just my backup channel. Anyways... <laughs> Uh, because this video is too long, I'm gonna cut up some parts, please do not be offended, but it's 14 minutes and I have to like shorten it a bit. Anyways, we can start recording in 3, 2, 1, go. Also, this is like the earliest time I have ever recorded. It's 8 a.m. So... <laughs> hmm. Hey everybody, so if you don't know anything about Indonesia, basically all you have to know is that it's kind of like the Hawaii of the Muslim world, but it's like huge. It's like the biggest state, you know, with the rank mm, Interesting. And that's it, just no punchline. Let's just go to the intro song. Okay. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. So as some of you know, I Barbie. went to Indonesia one time on one island for like three hours. I ate one dish, so basically... Why only one? <laughs> I'm like the Indonesia expert, right? Well, if not, I'm kind of like the only guy on YouTube doing full profile videos like this. So for true, now, you'll just true, have to kind of deal with me for like the next 12 or so minutes. Woohoo! Okay. Default! Okay. <laughs> Alright, so again, if you don't know anything about Indonesia, it's basically like if the Middle East and South Asia had an incredibly colorful, loud, somewhat explosive set of babies. Like thousands oh, of them. interesting. Okay, that doesn't really help. <laughs> First of all, Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago nation located right where the Indian Ocean meets the Pacific Ocean on the incredibly clustered mm. set of islands making six countries known commonly as Nusantara or the Malay Archipelago. <laughs> Indonesian Archipelago. Sure, whatever makes you happy. Indonesia actually has land borders with three of these countries, East Timor, Papua New Guinea, and Malaysia on the biggest island border Borneo or Kalimantan, which is one of the world's only two triple split nation islands, the other one being Cyprus. Although technically if you include the UN buffer zone, it's kind of like four entities, but... Oh, he's talking so fast, I'm gonna like... Uh, how, how am I gonna retain all this information? The UN oh. is the country, whatever, just watch the Cyprus episode. The country is divided into 34 provinces, five of which have special administrative statuses. Thank the capital and most populous city, Jakarta, located on Java. Oh, most I know that. populous island Java. with nearly half of the entire population of Indonesia in it. The largest cities after Jakarta are Surabaya and Bandung, both located Surabaya, on Bandung. Java Island, and Medan, located on Sumatra. Okay. Jakarta, Soekarno, Hatta International, Bali's Mura Rai International, International in Despansar and Surabaya's it Juanda so International. Cool. Now here's where things get a little speculative. Today there are still arguments claimed as to exactly how many islands Indonesia has. The National Coordinating Agency for Surveying and Mapping says Indonesia has about 13,500. The National Institute of Aeronautics and Space Agency says that it has about 18,300, whereas the Indonesian government claims about 17,500. But wherever the point is... <laughs> what? Why? Why is it so hard to pinpoint how many islands there are? Hmm. There's a lot of them. Over 8,800 have names and over 900 of them are permanently inhabited. You would think they are the oh. country with the most islands, but surprisingly, Finland and Canada beat them. But a lot of their islands are kind of uh? like little islands in the lakes. So does it really count? <laughs> I guess. Now let's talk about the five special administrative provinces. They are Aceh, Yogyakarta, West Papua and Papua, and the capital Jakarta. Now, no surprise, the capital Jakarta acts Only no Jakarta. Of <laughs> Lots of countries do that. But what about the others? First, Aceh. Aceh is kind of like the black Aceh. sheep of Indonesia. Indonesia. It's the only oh. province in which Sharia law is fully implemented. Also, they kind of have like a ton of oils. So oh, Sharia law, the Muslim law. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, so it's the only place where the Sharia law yeah, is implemented? Kind of asserted a very independent ideology that sets them apart as autonomous from the rest of Indonesia. Then you have Yogyakarta, oh, okay. which is the only region that is still governed by a pre-colonial monarchy. The Sultan of Yogyakarta, who acts as a hereditary governor. Otherwise, we get the two Papuas, which collectively used to be the province called Irian Jaya, but then in 2003, they got split into two. Basically, this is the place that has the least in common with the rest of Indonesia. It has a culture and background closer to their cousins across the border in Papua New Guinea. So then why is this part of Indonesia? Well, long story short, Indonesia was basically like, well, now that we have our full sovereignty, we get everything that the Dutch colonized. But the people of Papua were not too happy, so then Indonesia was like, all right, we'll give you a vote to stay or leave. However, we would strongly implore you to make the right decision. So they voted oh, wow. to stay in. A lot of
lot of people complain. There's still some current opposition, and to this day, the area has a relatively high level of autonomy, and the government kind of just leaves them alone, except for when it comes to mining for resources. Oh, in the south, Maluku area also kind of has like mm. an independence dispute <laughs> thing kind of going on, but the major opponents so to the Indonesian cool. government are primarily based in the Netherlands. Then you have the strange Riau Islands, which look like they should belong to Malaysia, but they don't, even though they have a strong Malay-derived culture. Then you have the Ambalat <laughs> Sea Block, which has a ton of oil that both they and Malaysia argue over. So that essentially covers most oh, of the um. administrative divisions of Indonesia. Some of the most notable spots of interest in Indonesia might include the National Monument and Museum, Royal Keraton Nayogya Kart. Oh, the pretty. Palace, Ratu Boko, the Magalang, and Chicken Shape. <gasps> That's so cool. Chicken shaped church. Churches, Borobudur, <laughs> disputed to be the largest Buddhist temple in the world. Maimun Palace, wow. the Taman Sari Underground Mosque, the Equator Monument, the Pura Ulun Danu Bratan Lake Temples. Yeah, I try to say that five times fast. Pura Ulun Danu Bratan Lake Temples. The Millennium Bratan. Bridge, the Sacred Monkey Temple, <laughs> the Hellmouth or Elephant Cave, the Seven Story Pagoda oh, this is so of cool. Sibu, it's the Sibu, the Mummy Villages of Aikim and Jiwika in Papua. Okay, or if you're you can just go know. to the Taman <laughs> Mini Indonesia Inda Park, which kind of has like a bunch of replicas of all the famed sites in Indonesia. Oh, and keep in mind, there's Dutch. Oh, Oh, wow. style buildings all over too many ancient temples and pagodas to list but no matter how many buildings and landmarks are built they will never compare to what mother nature has done which brings us to Indonesia's land is like oh. that one ex we all had back in our 20s that we trusted a stupid friend to hook us up with. Super attractive, but almost killed you a few times. Indonesia lies on what, what is labeled <laughs> as the prehistoric continental shelf known as Sundaland, which during the Ice Age times pretty much connected all of the islands together before the Wallace Line until the ice melted and filled in the gaps. Now this is where things get incredibly messed up. Not only is Indonesia right in the worst part of the Ring of Fire, but the country is basically smashed between three converging major continental plates. The Eurasian, the Pacific, and oh, the Australian wow. plates, with dozens of minor plates and rifts like the Sunda, Timor, Banda, Moluka, and so on. This, in return, gives Indonesia over 400 volcanoes, disputably more than any in the oh world, no. with over 150 active ones, making it the most volcanically active country in the world as well. This means oh, on a daily basis, Indonesia experiences on average good. about four earthquakes a day, ranging anywhere between the small... Guys, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Oh my god. I, we're, I don't know how like countries who have active volcanoes cope with like earthquake earthquakes and stuff because i don't think we even have one volcano here even close to like i don't think we're even close to that we experienced earthquake one time this year and uh, like it was so mild i didn't even like realize it was there and also it was the first time since i'm alive that there was like a earthquake type thing here so find myself really grateful for that timid three right to now. a noticeable six on the richter scale and you never know where or when they will happen hmm. Impressive. Nonetheless, volcanoes can be a good thing, especially when concentrated close to the equator as the warmer humid climate allows moisture and minerals to coalesce, creating some of the most fertile land on the planet. This is why places like oh, Hawaii okay. and Iceland are so radically different despite both being volcanic islands. In the end, Indonesia got blessed with a flourishing abundance of flora and fauna, the second highest concentration in the world after Brazil, many of which being endemic species like nice. the Rafflesia arnoldi and the Titan oh, Arum, the largest flowers in the world which each smell like rotting corpses. Uh, and at over 180, oh. they also have have the highest <laughs> concentration of mammals out of anywhere in the world. Nonetheless, the national animal is actually a reptile. That's so cool. I know that animal from, like, I, I've seen, like, um, uh, some photos of that anim animal. I don't remember what's it called. But it's such an interesting animal to me. The like, largest oh, in the world at I love animals. Long, the famous Komodo dragon, which you can find oh, yeah, on Komodo, Komodo dragon. Island, which is where they get their name from. And they can kill people. Just a heads up. Okay. And the surprisingly not okay. national animal, even though everybody knows and loves them, the yeah, only love. great ape in Asia, orangutans, are only found on this archipelago as well. By the way, they look docile and quiet, but orangutans can rip off your arm if you anger them. Stop giving me, like, <laughs> anxiety about animals. I love animals. Stop so it. So don't. Otherwise, the largest mountain okay. in Pungkak, China, is located... Remember, <laughs> guys, Mother Nature is beautiful, but if she wants, she can kill you. Close to Pungkak, Jaya oh, is no. Grasberg, the largest <laughs> gold and copper mine in the world. And on Mount Ijen on Java, which spews out blue lava... All it's going too fast. So good, like, very good information, but it's going too fast, like... Or is it because I... It's 8 a.m. here, and I cannot process information that well today. Maybe that. I'm sorry. Or we can find intrepid sulfur miners that literally go into the base of the volcanic craters, risking health just to get raw sulfur ores. Otherwise, you have other anomalies oh, no. like the Sidorajo mud volcanoes, the three-colored lake Kelimutu in oh, that's Flores, so pretty. the Kakaban Island jellyfish lake. Two 
Oh, that's so cool. I love jellyfish. I mean, looking at them, of course, not you know, many streams. Them. <laughs> to this day, Indonesia is the number one producer of palm oil, cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, coconut, and vanilla. Some national dishes mm, might include things mm. like rendang, <laughs> satay, or satay, gado gado, lontong, ketupat, papeda, ikan bakar, pempek, wow. tumpeng. Le <gasps> oh, kind of want to eat something. Gado, like lontong, ketupat, papeda, ikan bakar, pempek. Tumpeng. No, where is it? Oh, what is this? Tumpeng. How is there so many things in one? What is this? Is this a salty or uh, sweet? Because it looks... Hmm. Some of the like uh, things look very sweet to me. Some of the things look kind of spicy or like... I don't know, this is Lemang, really interesting. The national dish, nasi goreng, which basically just means nasi fried goreng. rice, which has no exact recipe. You can mix it up and kind of do whatever you want to it. Oh, and keep in mind, Malaysia might argue that some of these dishes belong to them, but that's a whole other story tied in with history and culture. Okay, yeah, let's not talk about it then. <laughs> True. Now, there's a lot of curious mysteries when it comes to Indonesia's people. Like, how did they become predominantly Muslim? Or what's the whole deal with them in Malaysia? Or wait, this guy is considered an Indonesian? What? First of all, the country has about 263 million people, making it the fourth most populous country in the world with the largest population of Muslims as well. Now, here's the thing. In a sense, yes, 95% of the population is considered native Indonesian. But that's an incredibly broad term, considering that Indonesia has about 300 different ethno-linguistic groups split up across all the island regions of the country. If you look at a map with the actual ethnic group break, down, it kind of looks something like this. Nonetheless, the two largest parent ethnic groups are the Javanese that make up about 40%, the Sundanese. Oh, someone told me they're Javanese in my comments um, when I was asking about something, so that that's make interesting. About 15%. Otherwise, the rest Sudanese. of the population is primarily Sudanese. made up of smaller groups and tribes that have only around 2 to 3% each, like the Batak, the Sulawesi, the Balinese, Minangkabau, Betawi, Papuan, Dayak, and so on. Finally, about 5% are non-indigenous Indonesians, like Chinese, Arabs, Indians, and even a few Europeans. They also use the Indonesian okay. rupiah as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. And here's where things get a little confusing. <sighs> culture and language. The one thing that kind of unites all Indonesians is that they share the national language Bahasa Indonesia, which means the Bahasa. Indonesian language. However, Bahasa Indonesia <laughs> is actually kind of like a lingua franca to many of the people as Indonesia is the world's largest trilingual country. In addition to Bahasa Indonesia, most people speak their own mother tongue as well as English. Yep, English. They caught on quick when they realized it was the money language. The funny thing is, even though <laughs> the Javanese make up the largest people group, the Javanese language is not an official language. Technically, it could have been, but then that would have favored one people group over all the others, which would have caused tension. So they kind of had to <laughs> choose like a neutral default. Plus, Javanese That's is like really hard to learn and the original writing system although very beautiful is incredibly difficult to write nonetheless yeah, at nearly 100 looking. million speakers this makes javanese the largest non-official minority language in the world and that's why the bahasa indonesia language is so strange it's not even technically indigenous to indonesia but more malay derived to this day people who speak bahasa <laughs> indonesia can understand somewhere around 60 to 70 percent of what their neighbors oh, are saying cool. in malaysia the biggest difference that's though, would cool, be the isn't words, as indonesia took quite a bit of influence from the dutch back in colonial times for example kantor versus kantor Doctor versus doctor. Mantel, mantel. Oma, opa. I Porto, mean, we all have portel. like. Some, Speaking of the Dutch, we all have some like influences. A lot of Tur Turkish like um, influence in Bosnia uh, because of the stuff that happened. <laughs> uh, a lot of Turkish like words stay here, you know, and a lot of Turkish meals and stuff. So quick yeah. history lesson: Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic kingdoms. The Portuguese come in quickly, but then the Dutch flock in. Japan comes in for a couple of years and decimates a huge chunk of the population. I heard about that. Independence, Republic, about what Japanese years, did. Controversial I mean, I watched the documentary. The Chinese, Timorese, and Papuan peoples. Suharto falls. Reformation period begins, and here we are today. In Indonesia, all citizens are. Required Required to register under one of six recognized religion categories Islam, Protestant, Catholic, Hindu, Buddhist, and Confucius. Oh, do you have to like register like what you are? That's kind of interesting. If you don't identify with either, then Sorry. Prior to Islam entering around what? the 13th century, Indonesia was actually primarily Hindu and Buddhist. It's disputed on how exactly yeah. Indonesia became prevalently Muslim. Some people will say that it's because of the Arab traders that came by in the early first millennium. Others will say that maybe it had to do with the Malacca Sultanate conquest that fought against the Hindu and Buddhist kingdoms. And the truth is, both might be right. Inevitably, Bali became like the last sort of haven for whatever Hindus were left. The eastern Nusa Tenggara region and the Papuas remained predominantly Christian as the Dutch and Portuguese shared the gospel. Islamic culture in Indonesia is a little different from what 
what it looks like in the Middle East. For one, most mosques don't have the typical dome structure, and actually many of them resemble Hindu temples, like the Damak Great Mosque. When a family member dies, their relatives might often come together and pray for a whole week, and then again on the 40th day, and then on the year anniversary, and then on the 500th day, and so on. Also, the night before Eid al-Fatir, the youth might gather and go around neighborhoods reciting the takbir. Those are some things you don't really typically find in the Middle East. Clothing modesty yeah. customs are pretty loose. Not all Muslim women wear hijabs, however, the ones that do might also complement it with Western clothing, like branded t-shirts with skin-tight sleeves and That's jeans. That's good. When I was in Indonesia, I saw a hijab-wearing woman with short sleeves and capri pants exposing her calves. I was like, can they do that? Now, in terms of culture, again, it depends on where you are, and many indigenous people still follow ancient traditions. Everything from the Minangkabau candle dance to the gamelan players of Yogyakarta, Wayang Javanese mm. shadow puppetry, Balinese festivals, Sumatran oh, Pencaxilat martial art tournaments, Kenya motif paintings of the Kalimantan tribes, the oh, deadly Pasola so game played by Sumba peoples, Karabeng cow Definitely? racing on Madura Island, the strange burial traditions of the Toraja people, and everywhere you can find those pointy longhouses. Otherwise, some notable people of Indonesian descent might include people like the first president, Sukarno, Gada Maja, R.A. Kartini, B.J. Habibi, Iko Uwais, Yayan Nuruhiyan, Sesep Arif Rahman, Agnes Monica, Iwan Faz, Angun, Megawati Sukarno Putri, the Hartono brothers, and YouTubers Brian Emanuel. Don't ask me to react to him. I already know him. I discovered him when he first became popular, so I know of him and I know most of his music. <laughs> and Raditya Dika. Now, it's so hard to cover Indonesia's culture Ryan. because there's so many different people groups, each with their own cultures. It's insanely colorful and rich. I wish we could cover more, but we got to move on to some diplomatics, shall we? Oh, this is such a long video. I don't know how I'm gonna cut okay, so this. so Indonesia is basically like the kingpin of Southeast Asia with the largest population and economy King. as well as being a member of the G20. Therefore, they know how to manage relations. G20? First of all, the rest of the Muslim nations in the Middle East generally get along with Indonesia as they see them as kind of like their strange Asian cousins. Indonesians make up a yeah, because... of pilgrims for the Hajj in Mecca. However, there has been some controversy with Saudi Arabia in regards to migrant work abuse and death sentences. Since then, Indonesia dramatically decreased its expat programs. The U.S., the Netherlands, what? and Australia are kind of like their biggest non-Asian supporters. In addition to trade and business, the U.S. played a huge role in Indonesia's independence, and they worked closely during Cold War times. The Netherlands still holds close ties to Indonesia, despite Asia are kind of like the Colombia and Venezuela of Southeast Asia. They're like the twins <laughs> separated at birth and have a strange love-hate relationship. Malays accuse Indonesians of stealing their culture and language. Indonesians accuse them of not being great for all their help during war times but when they actually oh, wow. meet up as people it's like they're totally brothers nonetheless most indonesians i talked to that's good at least people are you know reasonable japan is probably their best friend which is funny because japan kind of really messed things up really japan too. nonetheless they've moved on and today japan makes up the largest export partner tourists flock in year round and the two have been building each other up for over half a century in conclusion indonesia's people are very much like their islands numerous with lush colorful strange diversity sometimes a cyclone earthquake or volcano of controversy erupts but at the end of the day they still flourish together as one stay tuned <laughs> iran is coming up next good okay let's stop this wow this was such a long video but i really liked oh my god good i recorded this i was scared that i wasn't recording but oh, gladly everything worked out okay this was a really good video i think i learned a lot about just some facts. I didn't learn anything much about culture and stuff that I wanted to. Felt like it could have been done like a bit broader. Even though it's already too long. I like videos that are about 10 minutes. Like, um, <laughs> I mean reacting to them. I, I don't think it's like this is going to be like 20 minutes now. And I'm going to have to cut it down. But I really liked this thank you for requesting it it was really interesting learning uh, about like uh, volcanoes and stuff and um, earthquakes in indonesia and about like just uh, how they like um, uh, their religions and their um, cultural differences from other countries and yeah about their uh, stuff with like uh, japan i don't know like why <laughs> they're really good with japan like considering what's going on in korea at the moment with japan you know and stuff i, mean, I don't know if i should talk about it but you know what i mean if you don't you can look it up um because of what japan did in the past you know so i don't know like it's fine to move on from those types of things but if a country is not willing to apologize or even like 
acknowledge their mistakes in the past, I don't think it's good, in my opinion. I love Japan, I love anime, I love stuff like that, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm glad Indonesia doesn't ha hold, I guess, a grudge against Japan. Uh, but still, you know, I feel like Japan should apologize for some stuff that they have done. I watched the documentary on that and it was really sad and they did a lot of bad things to a lot of countries. So, but it is in the past, I guess. I don't know what to say about that. I really loved uh, and enjoyed learning about this stuff. <laughs> Wish it wasn't this early so my brain could process stuff more, but it is what it is. Hope you enjoyed my video. I love you guys so much. I'll see you very soon in the next one. I love you. Bye.